Well, it's here. Buttons and bugs. Look at the size of this box. So cute. So I have had this since Friday and I have waited to open it until now. And this is my first unboxing, so I have no idea how this is going to go. But, oh, I already saw a little bit of it. So, there it is. It is unbelievably small. Gloomhaven buttons and bugs. So, I suppose we can put this in the bin. Uh, so, very... I've been looking into this a little bit and I've been watching um, a couple of playthroughs just to get an idea of how it actually feels compared to uh, Frosthaven, which we're in the middle of doing, and how they were gonna, like, I was explaining to Gaz that I felt like this game, just from the feel of it, it was gonna be a little bit like um, the solo scenarios, which are very puzzly and very sort of tight, and it was just like a whole bunch of solo scenarios, which it kind of is. But then when I saw how they impacted uh, the modifier deck uh, and the fact that you've got these cards that like are basically the same thing as the Gloomhaven and Frosthaven kind of series, but double-sided, it was like pretty amazing. So there it is there. Looking snazzy. And now let's see how they can fit. I like Nikki Valens. They are amazing. Oh, cute little book. See, guys, you're not going to read this. So, you know. Ah, oh, Dyes Tutorial. I should probably look into that. So they actually have an app now. Well, actually, they had an app a while ago for Board Game Teach, which was done in an app form. And um, really cool idea. I just, I think it's been in development forever. I don't know how. Actually, I should probably look into that and just see how actual finished it is. Little little cubes, which we don't really see in Gloomhaven. We've got our, our terrible dice when it comes to rolling terribly, I guess, which is going to be really exciting because I do, do like dice. I like, uh, and this dice has got the, I think, yeah, two of each symbol, two circles, two pluses, and, um, two noughts, zeros, nulls. Can't get over the size of these things. These things, the minis, are on a whole other level. Get these kind of set up. I can't paint these. There's no way in hell I can paint these. That's so cool. They are so cute. There you go, you can kind of see them there. Ah! Can't stop shaking. Alright, so we've got that. We've got hit point dials, um, and oh, I think they're all hit point dials, yeah. The hit point dials for your enemies. Um, I think that's yourself, uh, and maybe a different type of enemy. Yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense, kind of rings true. Uh, another one for another type of enemy, okay cool. Oh, they're the four different colours, right, for tracking the different types of uh, creatures. We've got our cards, so these are all the enemy types cards and basically what we're looking at is that you've kind of got the three different, oh, I should probably get the board thing out from what I understand, yeah. So this is really cool, I like what they've done with the modifiers for the bad guys. So you stick one of these cubes into here. Like so. And while it's up there, the monster attacks, you're on this particular row when it comes to their attacks. So instead of pulling a modified card as you would in normal Frosthaven and Gloomhaven, you actually roll this die. So if it's a, oops, let's hide that. So if it's a minus, um, yeah, you would take this result here, which is the minus one. So whatever their attack is based on their sheet. So this guy over here, and there's a separate uh, die for it, it putting, working out what their initiative is going to be. You just keep rolling this thing. Like, on paper, I'm already super excited just by rolling dice again. Um, but you roll this you deter to determine what they're going to do on that turn. And then let's say it's the first one. So the Bandit Guard's going to do the actual um, 
initiative at 30 is going to move to hit you for one, you would then roll this to see, so it's a zero right now, so it's going to be plus zero, so it's going to hit you for one, uh, and then you can use your armor and your shields and all that, and then it moves down to the next row, and it keeps basically uh, moving, uh, I believe every time they attack, or every time the group attacks, that I need to check the actual rule book for. Um, but then, yeah, you can get some real nasty responses, but that's also how you will do your attacks when you, um, play your cards and do a move attack. What have we got here? This is just so cool. Is there another deck? Oh, it's here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, like, fire orbs, for example, this card here, uh, infuse fire. There's an element tracker? Oh, you got tokens and everything. Not that we don't have a shortage of those. So these are all the monster trays. So I assume... Does this go like this? Is that how that works? No? Ah, like that. Yeah. It's like that. So we take another one of these... These cubes. And I believe the coloured cubes also represent the monsters. So when you're tracking, let's say, the dark blue, is that a blue? No, it's a purple. Um, you would use the purple cube. So when you have your map, which I don't know if I want to open this yet, um, you just track their positioning where the cube is on the tiny little cards. And then you've got your tiny little miniature. And then um, you do Gloomhaven shenanigans. I'm actually excited. I'm for an unboxing, I'm just kind of ripping through most of it. Um, so we've got Cragheart, Bruiser, Spellweaver, Tinkerer, Mind Thief, Silent Knife, and then you've got a scenario deck like this, which I'm not going to go through. Um, I kind of want to show you just one of the maps. So, ah. Kind of, scenario one. You can see scenario one. Kind of looks like this. So yeah, it'd have your miniature on the starting location, which is going to be here. And then you've got your little enemy cubes, which are going to be wherever the enemies spawn. So you've got a green, well, you've got a green one and a blue one, but you'd put the cubes there. And then you've got little spaces like that. So on your turn, you'd still play the two cards. Uh, and you'd play this bottom, let's say, move four. So you can do your move four, and then you play your other top card, which we'll just say it's the same card. is an attack three, um, targeting three within range three. That's a lost card. Fire orbs, and then you would perform those attacks with your modifier things. So this is level one. So you can level up in this. Did not know. Uh, put you back. How does one level up? Ah, uh, oh, okay, cool. So you can actually change the difficulty. So to change the modifier deck for the enemy um, to an easier one where you have more negative results, more chances of them to miss and do very little damage. And then you got harder, which is a lot more pluses. Ah, you, oh, you've got level up stuff. Oh, that is so cool. So they did think of that and incorporated it in a different way. Can you choose? Oh, it just keeps going up. Oh, I see. Yeah, that is, uh, amazing. I, I'm actually going to have to um, just fine-tune the rules for this thing and actually pump out some scenarios. And um, see how this all looks. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll stick around and um, just record the first scenario and see how that all goes and see whether or not I'm actually stupid. Which I probably am. Yeah. Bye.